What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, I want to showcase to you guys how awesome ChatGPT plugins are. I want to explore this feature a little bit with you guys for those of you who don't have a GPT plus subscription. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to talk about ChatGPT plugins in this video today. And this seems to be a feature now that is available to all or at least to a lot of ChatGPT plus users. At least I didn't get access in any special way. I didn't play the YouTube card or anything. I got access like everyone else probably that has a ChatGPT plus subscription. And if you want to make sure if you have access to ChatGPT plugins, you just have to go down here to the bottom left to the settings menu and then you can click on beta features and you have to activate plugins you can also activate the code interpreter which we're maybe going to cover in another video uh, but you have to enable plugins here so that you can use them and of course they're a beta feature as it says here so uh, they're not perfect yet uh, if you want to use plugins you have to go to gpt4 and then you have to click on plugins here and then you can install plugins through the plugin store. You also have the plugins that you have already installed listed here. You can activate and deactivate plugins. And in this video today, I just want to show you a little bit um, how these plugins work and what you can expect from them, because I think that this adds a whole new dimension to ChatGPT because you now have access to real time data from the Internet and not just something, not just the data that was used to train ChatGPT or GPT in general up until 2021. So this is actually, uh, this opens a lot of new possibilities. So you can go down here to the plugin store. Today, I want to cover mainly three plugins that I have installed already. This show me diagrams, this chat with PDF and the Wolfram plugin for computation, just because I have played around with them already. And they have some quite in interesting results. And maybe we're going to look at a couple of other plugins as well. But if you go to the all category here, you will see that there are a lot of different plugins, you can look at all of them if you want to. There are a lot of different plugins with different functionality. And this is quite impressive, because all of them can do something for ChatGPT that ChatGPT maybe itself is not capable of. And then ChatGPT can further process the results. So we're going to start here with a simple Wolfram Alpha example, Wolfram computation engine example, because what I like to use ChatGPT for is mathematical stuff. So explain a concept to me, solve uh, an exercise for me, of course, not for cheating, but for understanding how it's solved. So if I want to understand the concept of solving exact differential equations, um, I might ask ChatGPT how it works and to solve an example for me. Now, you don't have to understand anything about uh, exact differential equations. But the thing about them is that oftentimes you cannot just take them and put them in into some solver, you need to go through multiple processes. And of course, even if ChatGPT itself knows how to, uh, how to solve the exact differential equation in terms of what steps are needed, the computations cannot be done by ChatGPT, it can try to do that sometimes it gets them right. But the results are oftentimes wrong, because just the computation itself, you know, taking the integral of something doesn't result in the correct integral, whereas Wolfram Alpha, of course, is capable of giving you an exact solution. So one example that I have here is using Wolfram Alpha, or just Wolfram, uh, to solve an exact differential equation, I have a prompt here, I'm going to copy paste it, uh, that I have used before. So I'm gonna load this into my clipboard. There you go. How would I solve this exact differential equation? So I specify it's an exact differential equation. And I have here some differential equation, which is exact. Um, and I can send this message now and what you will see here, probably, at least if it doesn't fail this time, it worked the first time, but let's see. Um, it tells me first of all, what an exact differential equation is, that we can imagine one part to be an m one part to be an n and they have to when you uh, take the derivative uh, with with respect to some variable that they have to be the same and stuff like that. You don't have to understand any of the mathematics here. But the fact is that you need to go through multiple steps, you need to first check if this is the case, you know, you take the uh, derivative of one function, you take the derivative of another function. Now we have a problem here. Because ChatGPT crashed. But in case this doesn't work, I can show you the example that I have from yesterday. Uh, but basically, it tells me, okay, first of all, you need to check this. And to check this, it uses Wolfram Alpha, or the Wolfram computation engine. So it checks if the differential equation is exact by calculating this partial derivative here. And you can also uh, expand this to see what it actually does. 
and it tells me here, okay, this is in fact a differential equation because this returned true. This is the computation done by Wolfram, so it's not by ChatGPT, so we can trust it. Uh, and then it proceeds to find a function. Now, I'm not sure if it's going to crash here or not, but you can see it solves this uh, differential equation by uh, asking Wolfram Alpha or Wolfram. And then you can see here the solution to this exact differential equation is given by this function. That is the solution here. And it would not be able to do that even GPT-4 would not be able to do that because it would get the computations wrong. It would understand, of course, I have to take the partial derivative, I have to compare them, then I have to compute the uh, the, the function capital F and stuff like that. It would understand all of this, but it would mess up the computations because ChatGPT is not a computational engine like Wolfram. And you can see that this combination is very powerful. It understands what I need to do to solve the equation so I don't have to think about solving it where I don't have to know how to solve it before uh, asking the question. But then also it can go through the computational steps here with Wolfram so that I end up with a correct result. And I hope this one is correct here. I didn't check, but I, I think this is going to be correct because the procedure makes sense. So that is a very powerful example for people that actually use mathematics in ChatGPT. Now, another example here is using the uh, the plugin called chat with PDF, or also you can you can go to the plugin store. There are a lot of plugins that basically do the same thing. So I think we have chat with PDF, ask your PDF, AI PDF, stuff like that. The basic idea is you provide a link to a PDF and it does something with that. So you don't have to copy paste the PDF anymore. You can just take some PDF that is available online. You can say, get this PDF. And now I want to chat with you about this PDF. So this could be a scientific paper. Uh, or in this case, I just Googled some MIT lecture on neural networks. I just picked anything. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I can just right click, copy the link, and I can say, uh, summarize this PDF in six bullet points. And then I can just provide the link here. And of course, uh, ChatGPT itself doesn't have access uh, to this PDF. But this plugin has, hopefully, I didn't try with this particular uh, PDF yet. Let's see if it succeeds. Otherwise, we're going to go with something else. Uh, no, okay, so let's go with uh, attention is all you need PDF. This is a paper, I think this should be uh, this should be possible to parse. So we're going to say copy link. There you go. Now, why doesn't it copy the link? Oh, because I'm not editing, of course. There you go. Save and submit. Summarize this PDF in six bullet points. Now I pass the paper uh, from the transformer paper, essentially. Success. Okay, now, now it works. And the idea now is it takes the PDF, it loads it into this plugin, the plugin parses the PDF, and ChatGPT can get... Uh, a response. So it says here, here's a summary of the paper attention is all you need and six bullet points. And it then basically takes the content of the PDF and summarizes it uh, in six bullet points. And of course, this works with any PDF that contains text content as it seems. And of course, if this plugin doesn't work, probably some other plugin will be able to parse it. I didn't look at the PDFs that I first tried to feed in. Uh, but this is a game changer because now you no longer have to to copy paste content from a PDF if you want to summarize it or if you want to ask questions about it. You have access now to this PDF via this plugin and you can just ask specific questions about the content in this PDF. And of course, you can also upload your own PDF to a Google Drive and you can then make the link public. And if you make the link public, you can just pass it here and it can uh, also work with your own custom PDFs. This is very powerful uh, and a nice use case as well. So. What I also want to show you here, this is just a nice, nice to have, I think, and it shows something that can be done with ChatGPT plugins that probably will be more comprehensive in the future is you can also plot certain things. So let's say you have some project that you implemented and now you have to write a report on it for university or for anything. You just have to write a report on it and you don't care about writing the report too much. You care about the work, but you don't care about writing the report and someone asks you to include a flow chart of a procedure. So you can just use this show me diagrams plugin here and you can say, okay, um, I have the following 
sorry, I have the following procedure and now you can, you know, describe your procedure or you can even pass some code. You can, you know, you can say this is my Python code, make a flow chart of this process. But you can also list bullet points. So I have the following procedure, load a CSV file from the API, then process the CSV file with pandas. Uh, or actually, we can say something like to um, check if the CSV file has a size above two gigabytes. If yes, use chunks with pandas, otherwise load the full data into pandas process it according to I don't know description and now we're going to make up some identifier x y z 786 upload results to Google Drive, I, I just make up something right now, okay, and plot a flow chart of this process. Now I can just run this and hopefully it realizes that I want to have some graphical representation. It uses show me diagrams. You can also see what it does here. Uh, it basically generated this year. And now it seems to to generate some some plot here. And this will then be displayed actually in there's an issue with the syntax of a diagram. Okay, this uh, seems to be a mistake because if I rerun this, it should work because I did something like that yesterday. I can show you the result here, but this should actually work. Mm -hmm. Let's see if it works when I try it a second time. There you go. Okay, so it worked on the second try. And there you go. You have a flow chart, I think. Uh, I will probably be able to also customize the styling. I'm not sure about this. Let's actually try. Maybe this plugin is even more powerful than I thought. Let's see. Um, can you change the color of the purple boxes to red? And can you make the connections thicker or something? I'm not sure if this is going to work, but I want to try here now. Um, does it actually use the same thing now? Yeah, okay, it uses the same diagram from before. So it still does this. Uh, it, it still plots this procedure. I'm not sure if the styling settings are going to be Oh, actually, they are, you can see fill ff 0000. This is red, you can also see the stroke width being changed here. So it seems actually like it can do that. Wow. Wow, this is impressive. I actually don't see that the connections are thicker. But yeah, I mean, you can adjust the styling with natural language. This is quite impressive. So this is just one, those are just three use cases of ChatGPT plugins. But you can see the idea here when we go to the plugin store, you can see how many different use cases we have. So I can again, open up a new chat here, plugins, plugin store, we have so many different plugins all have their different use cases. And now you just have ChatGPT, the intelligence of ChatGPT connected to resources that have access to data that goes beyond the training data for ChatGPT. So we have, for example, um, shops that we can query, we have, uh, what is that surveillance stuff? I mean, when we go to the popular, this one is probably quite powerful Keymate AI search, we can use Google to search, we can uh, use scholar AI to search scientific papers, which is also quite uh, useful. We can interact with Gmail, Google Sheets, and so on. This is just a whole new paradigm of using ChatGPT, you can use the natural language and ChatGPT can then decide, okay, what is beyond my capability? What do I need plugins for? Which plugins do I have available? And then it can just use them, which is extremely powerful. Uh, I'm very impressed by that. And I hope that this is made accessible to as many people as possible soon, because I think that this will increase productivity a lot more. Of course, it will make people lazy, because now instead of doing their homework, they're going to use Wolfram when it comes to mathematics, instead of um, doing their programming homeworks, they're going to use something else. So 
Of course, it makes everything easier. ChatGPT can do now more stuff, but I think this is really a game changer in using ChatGPT and I'm very excited to see where this goes. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. Also, let me know which of the plugins that are available right now are your favorite ChatGPT plugins. And other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.